I thought you might enjoy another story from uh, Harry Brown's book, A Missionary in the Making. Uh, so many exciting stories, and I couldn't leave it down without adding one more story. I want to be thinking about the subject of assurance. It's one thing for people to believe in eternal security. In other words, once you're saved, God secures you. It's another thing for people to personally enjoy that assurance. And um, I was thinking of a famous verse in John 5 and 24, the Lord Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Now, this first phrase, most assuredly, is uh, an attempt by the translators to help us with something that might be difficult to grasp. The fact is that those words in the original are actually the repeating of Amen. Amen, Amen. In other words, this is double sealed, double secured. This is underlined twice. This is two exclamation points. Uh, the Lord is saying, you can be sure of this. This is signed, sealed, and delivered. And there are 25 of these Amen, Amen statements. We may put a link in the bottom and give you a complete list of those if you'd like to study them. But some of the most important things that Jesus says in the Gospel of John are found in those 25 statements. And this is one. Have you heard his word and have you believed in him? That's it. If faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, we hear it, we believe it, and that's it settled. And the Lord says you have, at the present time, eternal life. And you won't come into judgment because you've already, as it were, passed through death, through the death of Christ and his resurrection, you now share in his eternal life. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Well, this is an exciting story. It happens during the Second World War, and uh, the Browns are living in Liverpool, which is on the west side of England, northwest England, and it has a lot of dockyards there, and so it was a favorite place for the Germans to bomb during the Second World War. And uh, Harry had had some experience in field ambulance work during the First War, and so he was conscripted to uh, train, organize, and train some first aid stretcher parties to be on the ready for these um, situations when the uh, bombing occurred. In any case, he started a Bible study in the aerodrome there, and this Bible study was full of young Royal Air Force fellows and Fleet Air Arm fellows, and it was every Thursday. Well, on a particular Thursday, he says, it was a Thursday night, and I was preparing to go to the aerodrome for the Bible study. There was a knock at the door, and I found an elder from one of the local churches asking if I could help them out. They had arranged for someone to give a message on a very important subject, but the speaker was ill. Would I please take his place? Now he says, I knew the Bible study group would be disappointed if I were not with them, but in the circumstances... I felt obliged to help the elder. Okay, so he goes to that local church instead of going to the Bible study. And then he says the next Thursday, strangely enough, the same sort of thing happened the following Thursday. Okay, so for two Thursdays, he missed going to the Bible study. The next Thursday, I managed to get to the aerodrome and the fellows were already gathered together. As I was walking in, there was a general chorus of, Where have you been these past two Thursdays? It turned out that they had contacted a fellow who said he was a Christian, but he didn't have the assurance of his salvation. They had done their best to help him, but apparently they had made little progress, and so they were banking on me being able to help him. But I didn't turn up. I said, anyway, I'm here now. Where is the fellow you want me to help? 
They said, you're too late, sir. He's already gone on leave, and after that he'll be going overseas. The last two Thursdays we had him here for you to talk to, but now he's gone, so you missed that good opportunity. I said, sorry about this, chaps, but when we have had our Bible study, we'll have a prayer meeting and pray for this fellow, asking the Lord to help him. That was a memorable prayer meeting, he writes. They all prayed for that fellow. And I'm sure he had never been prayed for before in that way. They meant that chap to have the assurance of salvation. After the meeting, I told the chaps that I would not be seeing them for two weeks. I was going over to the other side of the country and would be giving talks on the tabernacle and using my large model. His nickname, by the way, was Tabernacle Brown because he did a lot of teaching on the tabernacle. They all wished they could be present at these meetings and assured me that they would pray for me and they would carry on with the Bible study each Thursday evening. He says, I I started the meetings on the Saturday night with a packed house and there was deep interest. After the meeting, a young fellow came to me and asked if he could have a talk with me. As we sat down, he said, I'm sure God brought me here tonight. I live 18 miles outside the township, and I came in to do a bit of shopping. Standing looking into a shop window, I saw a big notice advertising your meetings. As I stood there reading it, a voice said, That is where you must go tonight. The voice was so real, I turned to see who was speaking to me, but there was no one. I looked at the notice again, and the voice spoke to me again. That is where you must go tonight. Again, I looked to see if there was anyone speaking to me, but I saw no one. I then realized the voice was in me, and I found myself answering and saying, I can't go there tonight because my mother's a widow. She lives alone. I'd be late getting home, and she'd be worried. But the voice insisted, I could not get away from it, and here I am, and I have got it. As I looked, I saw happiness on his face. His eyes sparkled. He was thrilled. I said, got what? He replied, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ a few years ago, but I've never had assurance of my salvation, never had real peace. But I got it tonight. (laughs) Can we kneel down and pray? He was already on his knees, and I knelt beside him. He prayed and said, O Lord, you know that for years I've not had the assurance of my salvation, but I've got it now. (laughs) I can see your beloved Son there at your right hand, there for me, there as me, there in all the value of his finished work of the cross. No one can touch him. No one can move him, and so no one can touch me or move me, because he is there for me. He's there as me. Lord, I thank thee for giving me this assurance tonight. Amen. I prayed for him, and we got off our knees. I asked if he could come to the meetings each night, but he said, That would be out of the question because he had to get to Chester the next day. I told him I had some very good friends in Chester and they'd be very pleased to see him and to help him in any way they could. He then explained that he was in the RAF and would be going to an aerodrome just outside Chester. Looking at him in surprise, I said, Do you mean Sealand Aerodrome? He said, Yes, that's it. Do you know it? Yes, I said. As a matter of fact, I was there last Thursday night. It was his turn to look surprised, and he said, What were you doing at Sealand Aerodrome? I said I was with a Bible study group, and after the Bible study we had a prayer meeting, and the fellows were praying for a a fellow named Len Moss. He grabbed my arm and said, Hey, that's my name. I'm Len Moss. What does all this mean? Yes, I said, You are Len Moss. 
You are the fellow who did not have the assurance of salvation. And all the fellows in that Bible study group have been trying to help you, but they weren't very successful, so they rather banked on me being able to help you because I was more experienced. But the last two Thursdays they were expecting me, I was unable to be there. And last Thursday when I did get to be with them, they told me I was too late. You'd already gone on overseas leave. So I suggested we have a prayer meeting to pray for you, and I reckon you've never been prayed for as you were prayed for last Thursday night. Those fellows really meant you to have the assurance of salvation. And tonight, you got it. The Lord has answered prayer. How wonderful of him to overrule and bring us together here on the far side of the country so that what I was unable to do at Sealand Aerodrome, I've been able to do here. He said, yes, it's, it's really marvelous. Those fellows told me they wanted me to meet a Mr. Brown, but when I saw your name on the advert on the shop window, I never connected you with the Mr. Brown of Sealand Aerodrome. There's no doubt about it. God heard and answered prayer. Man, God is so real. And he's so caring and thoughtful. And he wants every one of his children, not just to be safe, but to be sure. These things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. If someone's listening to this and you struggle with assurance, please understand, we're not made sure by looking inside. We're made sure the way we're made safe. We need to look away from ourselves to the Lord. We shall assure ourselves before him, writes John. And so he can give us assurance. Ask the Lord to give it to you, to give you that sense of peace. Just like the Lord Jesus spoke, peace be still to the storm. He can speak peace be still to you. If you have heard his word and you have believed on him, you have ever lasting life. And you won't come into judgment because you've already passed from death to life. And this message that, that this brother Moss heard, the idea that what Christ did on the cross makes us safe, but where he sits now in the glory makes us sure. This is the anchor of our soul, sure and steadfast inside the veil. You see that? My life is hidden with Christ in God. There's nothing that any enemy can do to, to wrest me from his power because Christ is my life. So my life is already in heaven. So be encouraged and look at these amen, amen statements and see how sure every believer can be. Not only saved, but sure. Not based on how we feel, but based on the authority of the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. <laughs>